Hey, I'm Trevor. This is my culture chest project. Um, so, a box, some things attached to the box. Got some things inside the box. The box itself is doing double duty as one of the um, it's outside identifiers because it is, in fact, a white box. Um, I'm a white male. I've also got my ID on here, which indicates my gender and my age. I'm a 35-year-old white male, and I think um, it's it would be it's very important to note that because it impacts my experience of all the other points of my identity. You know, um, as was discussed in this week's reading and several of the readings, really it's focusing on how race and ethnicity impact our experiences of so many aspects of the world. Um, I have white privilege because I am a white male. Um, it, the way that I move through the world is often smoother and less, um, What's the word? Less, less full of like anxiety and fear about things um, that would be identity based because the world is um, often uh, geared towards people with my um, skin tone and gender as the norm. Um, also on here, I've got um, got a picture of my children. I'm a parent. Um, they're like way older than this now. They were young then but they don't let me take pictures anymore um i was a young parent and for a long time in my life that was um that was like an interesting experience to go to things like parent teacher conferences where i think when you're um 19 or 20 21 at a parent teacher conference um i had an adopted daughter and so i was attending those things at a really young age and people maybe like don't take you super seriously i felt like um at that time, I'd have to advocate um, extra loudly to be heard. And even even when my um, biological children were young, I was still young because I was 19, 22 when they were born, respectively. And so, um, yeah, people probably um, have opinions about your life choices when you have kids at a young age or what you're sort of like I don't know what those are but I do know I did get definitely a sense that like um I mean I wasn't you know my life was not as established as some people who were older parents to put it frankly um and that was I think felt by both myself and my um my partner at the time uh, my children's mother so I've also got on here um, my business card. I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but I'm um, the team lead on an ACT team in Vermont, where I live. Um, and I think that's an outward identity at this point. I've been living in the particular community I'm living in for a couple of years now. I've had this position working for this organization. Um, I interact with a lot of other community agencies. Um, in this role, uh, I supervise people. Um, the people that I support know that my like position in the organization. Um, and I mean, I think all of these things are intertwined. I, I do think that like um, my identity as like a white male historically in my life has impacted my ability to um to apply for interview comfortably and be offered supervisory jobs or roles like higher than the one i currently had um i definitely think that it's easier for me to do that than it would be if i had um, a more marginalized identity um and on here i also am somebody i have a criminal record and for a long time, uh, if you Googled me, that was like the first thing you would see. Um, and this is um, 
a probation order. These were my conditions of probation that hopefully last time I was on probation. And having a criminal record um, definitely impacted, has impacted like many things in my life. It's becoming less acute as it's more in the past, but um, when you ap apply for apartments, when you apply for jobs, people run your record and it's a conversation you have to have. And when um, I would have to think about like how I wanted to manage that. I typically chose to get, get out in front of it and talk about it first because I feel like when people see a criminal history, they, um, they kind of start to write the story themselves, um, which I don't, I wouldn't blame anybody for doing that. I think that's a natural impulse, but knowing that like that happens, it's a thing you have to consider when you're like, oh, somebody's going to see this stuff. And I would really like to have the opportunity to like say my side of it before. So it's not like a surprise and it doesn't. Um, so yeah, there's, that's the outside of the box. Um, Inside the box, I've got some. Uh, I've got some other stuff. So, I mean, just to tag on to the last thing, the criminal record. I also in here now. This is my uh, like medallion. I've been sober for several years, um, about six years now, and I uh, yeah, it's made a huge impact on my life. It's like changed the whole thing, you know. Um, but it's not something that you would see from the outside. You can't um, Google my like sobriety date or whatever. Um, but it's a huge part of my identity, you know? It's really, really allowed me to have a very different kind of life than the one I had um, in the past. Um, I'm a parent, but I also have parents. This is a, a card from my dad that really means a lot to me that he sent to me um, shortly after I got sober. And it's, um, I just, I had heard somebody say recently in like an interview somewhere, and I wish I could cite it better, but I just heard it in passing. And they said in kind of an offhanded way that like, um, we're all sons and daughters of somebody. And it just kind of like really hit me and I've been thinking about that a lot that um, that we all have those kinds of relationships like um, I often work with and just in my general life interact with people in like really vulnerable situations who've been through a lot of stuff who maybe are um, uh, some of the folks I support have pretty considerable mental health issues and that sometimes manifests as like really outwardly um, aggressive or intense behavior um, and I think in those moments, it can be easy to maybe see them existing in the vacuum of that moment, but they don't, nobody does. Everybody is somebody's like son or daughter, you know, everybody has those connections. I, I don't want to say those are always positive connections. They're not, but everybody is connected, you know, in some way. And I just wanted to represent that, that I have that connection too, to remember that, like, I have that, um, I do creative stuff too, like artsy things. I write poetry, I do music. Um, this is a haiku of Shelp. This is like a project um, they did at the Highland Center for the Arts in Vermont. And this is a souvenir from the project where during the pandemic, local poets wrote haikus and read them and artists made sculptures out of like things in their surroundings. And um, I got a couple of haikus in here. And and I liked it because it was centered on like where people live, and I'm really um, I in in adulthood I've come to really identify as somebody who like lives in Vermont and is from Vermont and whatever that means to me. Um, but it's important. Small town communities are important to me, and the place I live is important. And I'll get to that again in the next in my box that'll come up again. Um, I'm a musician. This is a release I did with a friend of mine. Um, this is the last physical copy I have. It's a cassette. There were CDs and stuff too, but um, this is what I had with my friend Dylan Patrick Ward, also of 
Belle of Swans, Vermont. Um, yeah, I, it's a super important part of my life, and I think it's really nice to have an outlet I'm invested in that isn't the sort of, like, social services work I do. Um, it's just a different place where, um, with, like, different concerns, similar concerns. Um, it's all about people, really, but... Um, but yeah, I think it's important to have like an outlet, a place where like I find meaning that isn't the work I do, you know? Um, in the last one, I'm on the board and I volunteer at the Bellows Falls Community Bike Project. Um, and really, I just, I just really like being a member of my community now and having an opportunity to give back and to be like involved in organizations that I think are doing cool things. And it's a nonprofit bike shop, um, trying to get bikes out of the waste stream, make them available and affordable for people in the community. Um, and it's super fun to just, again, be at a place where like, I'm not in charge and do some volunteer work and learn some things about fixing a bike. And I love to be involved in like the community I live in. Um, so yeah, that's that's my culture chest. I hope I hope that covered it. Um thanks.